Okay, as you can see, I did not use the normal background that everybody else used. So, and since I kind of oriented this thing during the break, I'm going to actually stand here at the board and use that. So, what I looked at was a study of children using uh, Minecraft, which is a game. And what kind of prompted me to think about this was um, this was a tweet from the February uh, February 25th, 2014. Uh, I got an email. We've reached 100 million registered users on the original Minecraft. 14.3% conversion rate to paid accounts. Wow. And that's the creator of Minecraft. 100 million users, and they released it, I believe, two years previous to that. So they'd already this game had already gone worldwide. Now, 100 million users, as far as a game goes, that's a that's a one of the largest game releases ever across all computer platforms and when i say all computer platforms we're talking pcs tablets um, game consoles cell phones there's been 54 million copies of minecraft sold so you can download a free version of, of minecraft but they actually have sold 54 million copies anywhere from 20 dollars a pop to well, there's the $6 version for phones all the way up to $20 for console, game consoles. And with that said, on September 15th, 2014, Minecraft was purchased by Microsoft for $2.5 billion. So this is kind of a worldwide phenomenon that has taken on a lot of notice. And, and something as myself as an educator has noticed right away was the number of students who were using Minecraft in, in the classroom. So the purpose of this study uh, is to explore problem solving and socialization in the Minecraft game among children in a home setting. Now as an educator, I've seen it um, in the classroom, but as far as my setting goes, I was focusing on, on children in the home, how they used it. The key concept that I found in uh, the use of Minecraft is constructionism. Now there's not a lot of research since Minecraft is relatively new, um, but constructionism, the idea behind constructionism is that it's a, it's a deviation off of Piaget's constructivism, where constructivism says that the learner, in order for a learner to, a learner cannot be given knowledge. They have to take knowledge and actually construct meaning from it in order for it to be, in order for it to make reason. Where constructionism come is, comes in, this is from Seymour Papert, who's a, who's a student of, of Jean Piaget. He said that you can not only just construct knowledge in the mind, but now we have, we have to have some kind of a tangible product to show that learning has actually taken place. And one of the things that he, and here's the, construct, uh, the definition, the learner constructs knowledge that results in a tangible product that demonstrates knowledge. The, the um, product or the, the program that uh, Papert developed at MIT was Logo. And Logo was one of the first I guess you could call it computer games where children actually were not just passive game players, but they were actual, actually actively um, programming the computer and telling the computer what to do. Okay? Now in the game of Minecraft, you have in, in essence a blank slate that allows a child to go in and create pretty much anything that they want. So in order to do my study, I used a home site I used uh, three children as participants of varying, various ages, uh, Grace, who is 11, Rose, who is 8, and Colin, who is 6. Uh, my data collection, I did one-on-one -on -one interviews with each of those children. And for my analysis, I did a, a single case study with open coding. Now, as far as main findings go, um, I think this was a quote um, that I got from Rose that I think really kind of exemplified what Minecraft really has meant for children. In that if you're trying to survive by yourself and you don't have somebody with you, then it's really hard to do. But when you have somebody with you, you can get a lot more things accomplished. Which I thought was kind of indicative of what Minecraft is, uh, or, or it currently is. When I first started this study, I really thought that the things I was going to find were going to be strictly along the lines of uh, communication, and collaboration and creativity. And what I found through the study was more than just those two major facets. So let's first talk about creativity. Minecraft is a world that, again, is a blank slate. You can use it in what's called a sandbox mode, and you can go in and create freely. You don't have to um, have to worry about, there are, you can actually have a gameplay where there are monsters and things that will attack you at night. 
But a lot of cases, the kids seem to have the most fun is when they put it in sandbox mode and they're not limited on, on the things that they can construct. They can fly through the world. They can build things at huge, uh, uh, at, at altitudes. They can build things underground. Um, and it's very easy for children to um, all come together in this world. And while they're in this world, um, they are able to uh, collaborate together and help build the world together. And there's also communication, practices of communication that's going on. Um, it was very easy to find um, in, my, in my interviews that um, whenever they needed help, uh, the children would always go to, would start with asking each other. And there was a lot of, of instances where they made note about working together to build things or find things or collect resources together. Now, some of the other things that I found outside of my two thoughts, which were creativity and collaboration and communication, which were going to be good, or which were going to be big, is this, this concept of research. This theme of research came up. Because after they got stuck and the other children couldn't help them solve the problem, they went out to YouTube. And they went out to other websites to try to find answers to, as to why or how do I do something in this world? How do I create something else? So there was this great theme of research running through here. There was also um, the theme of critical thinking. That kind of goes along the lines of research. So they would look at it and go, how do I solve this problem? And then they would problem solve together. Or they would, again, they would pull from their research and go, well, I did it this way. Is there a different way we can do things? So I found that critical thinking was a, was a theme that ran right through the interviews. And one of the other things, too, was digital citizenship. Um, kind of along the lines of, the, of uh, doing the research, um, one of the comments made was, I really like the YouTube videos, but I don't like it when people use bad words. And so it seemed that they knew right away that, they were, that, that when they would go to do their research that they were cognizant of what was appropriate and what was to be said. And this is one of the things that's hardest to teach in a school. It's kind of been ignored in schools because di uh, digital um, places to collaborate together are kind of, uh, especially at the K-12 level, are kind of right now still um, not allowed. You know? For example, um, Facebook is not usually typically allowed, but that's the social network that kids like to use. But we as teachers, we don't actively use it. So we ignore it. And so kids kind of run wild using Facebook as they kind of see fit and make their own rules and definitions. And then also technology operations. Um, one of the questions that I asked was, what do you do when you have a problem? You know, and, and it wasn't a problem like uh, trying to figure out something in the game, but what if you do if you have something a, a problem with the game? And it was a lot of either I'll switch to a different machine or I'll close out the program and I will reopen it and I will create a new world. So there was this, this higher order thinking skills of not just working within the world, but how do I use the technologies around it and what technologies can I use? Because they were very quick to jump between uh, a desktop computer, an iPad, uh, a ta uh, an Android tablet, or a cell phone to interact in the game. Now, the implications of all this is that all these findings that I had in, in the study relate directly to the International Society of Technology and Education Student Standards, which is what almost every K-12 school district in the United States and the world, these are international standards, used to try to design technology programs in their schools. Minecraft in itself, if used by, ch used by children in a non-educational setting, were, were meeting all of those standards. Every single, all six of those standards were found as themes throughout this study, which I thought was, was very fascinating. Now, as far as um, main uh, research points that I had, um, there was a, a, a study that I found about integrating online technology into teaching activities to enhance student and teaching teacher learning in a New Zealand primary school. They actually used online learning to teach a uh, online art program. Uh, actually, I, I believe it was, a, it was an arts and, and acting program. Um, but what they found was that uh, having the social network and having the social collaboration actually enhanced the learning that took place. Um, this right here, this uh, reference is directly related to Microsoft willing to pay the $2.5 billion. They see this 100 million users as a big market, obviously. And it's growing in the education field as well, too. If you go to Microsoft or, or Minecraft.edu, there's actually a whole domain about how you can use Minecraft now in education. 
And in fact, in the Rockford Public Schools, we are going to be using it at Kennedy Middle School, where we have some of our lowest performing students in the hopes of, of trying to get them to uh, collaborate, learn to collaborate and work together and, and increase reading scores. Um, one of the other works I have here is uh, Seymour Papert's book, The Children's Machine, which was written in 1993. It goes very much to about what constructionism is. It talks a lot about what logo is and how logo works and how children can use it. And what's funny is, is that the, the book written in 1993 before the dot-com boom and before the internet boom that, and really the, the, the birth of the information digital age, um, it, the, the things that are in that book are still relevant today that he talks about, about using computers not to just be consumers of, of information but creators of content. And then finally, the study here about students' construction as game modeling activities as part of an inquiry learning process. So again, the studies there found that using constructionist games um, created uh, environments where we had all six of those, of those uh, themes coming up of, of creation, collaboration, communication, modeling, uh, research, uh, digital citizenship, and the last one. I forgot what the last one is. Also. Critical thinking, thank you, yes. Um, so that is it. Any questions? Yes. Um, so you talked a lot about the kind of collaborative nature of Minecraft. Now, is there something unique? I'm wondering if there's anything you identified about learning that's unique to Minecraft and not just kind of the collaborative nature of it or just working in an online environment. Is there something about, I don't know much about how Minecraft works, but is there something unique to the kind of learning and in Minecraft that contributes to this development? I think what, I, per, my personal opinion, because I didn't find anything else that's, that really said it, and there are derivative games like uh, Survival Craft and Blocks World, which are now also very popular with children. Um, but I think it kind of goes back to, um, it is a free environment that kids can construct freely in. Um, also, you give kids Legos, and they really seem to like Legos, but they never seem to have enough Legos to build what they want to build. Like it is literally virtual Legos. I mean, Lego, yeah, Lego Land is, is one of the most popular places for kids to want to go, um, but I think that that's really a big component of it. When I was a um, tech director in Forreston, we gave iPads to every student um, in grades 6 through 12, and we gave them the ability to install apps with, uh, that were below a mature level, so anything at an age-appropriate level they could ins install onto their iPads. And within two weeks, when I did a report that said what apps are installed on what iPads, because I was just trying to see what, what it had come about to make sure that the kids had gotten the, the standard apps, um, I found that 97% of the, um, how many students was it? It was about 450 kids had installed Minecraft onto their iPads. And I would come to school in the morning, and I would see clusters, because you can only have five in a world at one time. And there would be clusters of five kids sitting in circles. Out. This, is a, this is a rural farm community where internet access is not ubiquitous. But they would come to school and sit outside where they could get onto the network together and actually sit in circles. And you would think that it's a very isolating. One of the, one of the slams on constructionism is that can, it can be very isolating. It's perceived to be very isolating because the knowledge is constructed here and then you generate the product. Um, I think Minecraft is an extension of what Logo was in that you can pretty much build and do whatever you want, but now you've got um, a social component to it that doesn't make it so isolating as it might have been before. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you.